what is pornography doing to the brain? Well, first of all, it's triggering the release of dopamine and in the short term testosterone by the observation of sex, not actually engaging in human contact. Think about the young brain being significantly more plastic and willing to rewire than the adult brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's no question about it. It's hyperplastic. Yeah. And of course it can wire rewire again, but you think about somebody who engages in a lot of porn watching, right? Watching porn, and that person is getting dopamine and testosterone increases by observing sex and not actually by engaging in human contact, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's concerning, right? And there, and obviously the, um, people vary, but it should come as no surprise that a lot of these people have trouble with um, romantic interactions when they do happen, right? Because they, their brain isn't conditioned to respond to those, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And there's variation there, I'm sure. And, and these are private matters, so there aren't good data because there aren't laboratory experiments that you could do on this sort of thing that uh, someone will probably <laughs> do those experiments eventually. But, but also dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty yeah. soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their, out of their brain. Mm -hmm. I personally think that porn and the availability of porn is, is a real, is a real detriment to the developing brain especially to the developing brain. Yeah. Now it sounds like you rescued the behavior um, yeah. and it takes some discipline, right? I imagine. And it, it's one of those things that um, it's also anxiety -less compared to dating and relationships where people are vulnerable on both sides and have to negotiate things like, you know, consent and timing and, you know, and communication and all the things that are really hard to do, mm -hmm. but are essential to do. That's, that's key. So I think uh, pornography is a serious issue. And because of the way that it taps into these very primitive systems, it's as serious in, in my mind as some of the other drugs of abuse, like the, the opioid crisis and talked about cell phones. You ever notice that when you get on a phone and you're scrolling Instagram, it's like a lot of fun. Like this stuff is cool. You're seeing people. And then sometimes you're on there and like, this doesn't feel good, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah. I'm just doing it. That's exactly how people talk about their drug use. That's exactly how people talk about alcohol use. That's exactly how people talk about gambling. You imagine this high, but the high doesn't show up and that's, you, you're dopamine depleted. You need to take some time away from it and then come back and then you can enjoy it again. Now with pornography, it's a slippery slope, right? There's also a whole aspect of pornography, which is that if people are pursuing pornography and they're not pursuing relationships, there is the potential that they reach their twenties and thirties and they are truly dysfunctional in terms of, look, every species has two major goals protect the young and make more of itself. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not you decide to have children or not is a, is a personal issue. I personally don't have children. I may someday, but every species protects its young. The, ma the maternal aggression is amazing, right? A mother protecting its young, there's nothing like it in the animal kingdom. Actually, that's not triggered by testosterone, that's triggered by estrogen, mm -hmm. which is interesting. But the parents of every species try and protect the young and they try and make more young. This is, this is like every species is, is driven to do that. Mm -hmm. And you think about what porn and masturbation, these things are, really are. I'm not calling them sinful. What I'm saying is they are potentially addictive, especially with the availability of pornography. So, um, you know, beware, you know, just everyone's different and, and people have to have to be careful about these circuitries. You really need to protect them. They are, they are super valuable. And so I would say in keeping with our theme of, you know, what are the other things to do to support testosterone would be, uh, don't engage, I would avoid pornography, frankly. I really would. I would, you know, maybe everyone's got their threshold for what's too much. For some people that might be, the number might be zero. For some other people, it might be something different and it's going to vary. Yeah. It would be different maybe using your imagination versus uh, seeing images or like, you know, is there a difference, which, if you know any of this, is there a difference between video versus, you know, old school way of like having magazines and things like that? Well, it's because like, it, it, it's like more fantasy and maybe, I don't know, maybe you thinking it through about this thing is different than you just watching. Or it. even uh, yeah. remembering past experiences. Yeah. So we can speculate there a bit. Um, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words and a movie is worth a billion pictures. Um, 
when oh. it comes to the the impact that it has on your nervous system. That's a bar. Yeah. You know, exactly. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm, I think it's fair to say that whatever problems exist in society today almost certainly existed a hundred years ago, but in a different form. Mm -hmm. Okay. We always think, oh, you know, stress was only there for the saber tooth tiger. And now there are no tigers. And we got this thing that's really unfortunate called stress. Look, let's imagine this was a hundred years ago. Spouses still cheated. People still died. You had, you know, physical challenges. There was a question of, how, you know, all that stuff is, is baked into us at a deep level, mm -hmm. right? None of those circuits have changed. It's just the circumstances that trigger them change. So I think that a hundred years ago, it wasn't cell phones. It might, but you can bet that there was, there were forms of pornography. They, they were probably more uh, cloistered away. They weren't, you know, as out there um, in certain parts of the world, it's still very, very uh, cloistered away despite the internet. So I think that what's healthy in this domain has never really been defined. This is one of the challenges. We know what an eating disorder is, but what's eat healthy eating, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you draw the line? I think given this uh, general theme that relationships are healthy, friendships are healthy, romantic relationships are healthy, and anything that inhibits the pursuit and functioning of, of healthy relationships is where you have to start saying, wait a second, I, is this behavior getting in the way? So look, it's, it's unlikely to be an all or none, um, I think, uh, and I don't know what the line is, but we just have to be careful anytime we are overwhelmed with powerful images of increasing intensity that's where you start getting into the dopamine depletion mm. that's where you start getting into the hormone depletion that that we're that we're talking about here so this is also true of violence mm. a lot of people they're like excited about watching zombie apocalypse violence plus all of that violence sex and everything getting poured into the same film well they made horror movies you know 50 years ago they were a little bit different the question is how strong were we driving the system and if anyone out there is feeling underwhelmed and kind of like life is no good, et cetera, chances are your dopamine system has been pushed too hard. I'll give one quick anecdote of a friend. He's got a kid, he's 21, he graduated high school. He went to community college for a little bit, decide not to do that anymore. Then he stopped working, he stopped exercising. He's really fit. He's got like, his genetics are like Nasimas. He's kind of like, he's just got this incredible physique and all that. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't work, doesn't do anything. He's a failure to launch as we call it. And they were analyzing, does he have ADHD? Does he this? And he heard Anna talk about dopamine depletion. And he called me and he said, and he said I'm going to do one month, no video games, no phone, no nothing. He's 25 days in and he's running again. He's lifting again. He's heading back to work again. And That's this awesome. was somebody who thought he had ADHD. Now there are people with ADHD out there, but what happened was he was dopamine depleted. So he mm. couldn't concentrate. He didn't care about anything. And so... Mm the phone and just living in this constant stream of movies that are really stimulating on YouTube and everything else. I mean, you have to be, I mean, we're on YouTube right now and I use YouTube for my podcast and everything, but you have to know when to shut that valve. And here's what I tell myself, shut that valve so that I can continue to enjoy it, right? It's like gorging yourself with tomahawk steaks. They're delicious, but unless you've been fasting all day, you're not going to eat nine of them, right? What's your record, Mark? I think I've done two. Two. But yeah, nine would be, yeah. a, that would be a feat. Yeah, yeah. two, but they were the size of, you know, the table, mm -hmm. but no. Um, so you have, if you want to continue to enjoy things and pursue things, you have to know when to slam the gate shut. And I think that no one told us that we needed to do that. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge.